Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wayne Drinkward. I'm class of 73 and chair of the Board of Trustees. It's my privilege to welcome you to the 59th commencement ceremony of Harvey Mudd College. The session is now uh, open and going, but before we sit down, I'd like to ask that we stand and listen to the national anthem as sung by our graduating seniors. Please be seated. We're here to celebrate uh, the completion of a rigorous academic curriculum uh, by an extraordinary group of the class of 2017. But before we get to that, I'd like to recognize that they didn't get here all alone. So we'd like to ask the, um, the class of 2017 to stand up and give a standing ovation to the family, to, supporters, the people that have helped them been here, especially their mothers. And now I'd like to introduce the president of the college, uh, Dr. Maria Clave. As we begin this ceremony, let us welcome our class of 2017, who are the reason we're all here. And I'd also like us to recognize our trustees, administration, faculty, alumni, staff, and parents for their involvement in Harvey Mudd College that makes today's ceremony possible. And I want to particularly thank Don Gross from the class of 1961 who joined us today in celebration of our 59th commencement and a warm welcome to all the mothers in our audience. Now 
Now, one of the first things we do in our commencement ceremony is to award the Henry T. Mudd Prize. In 1992, the college began a tradition of recognizing, during commencement, one person who has contributed greatly to generations of students and to Harvey Mudd College. The first recipient of the Henry T. Mudd Prize was President Emeritus, Professor Emeritus, and Trustee Emeritus, Joseph Platt. By tradition, the selection of the awardee is done in secret, and the recipient is not informed until the ceremony. The honoree will receive a $6,000 award, 3,000 of which is designated for use within the college at the discretion of the awardee. The citation for today's winner of the Henry T. Mudd Prize reads, for his extraordinary service to Harvey Mudd College spanning over two and a half decades, during which he has served with wisdom, kindness, passion, and expertise. For his teaching with clarity and humility, but also with a healthy dose of theatrical flair. For his scholarly leadership, recognized nationally, which includes his co-authoring of over 40 papers with students, advising over two dozen senior theses, and publishing and co-editing several books. For being an unofficial ambassador for Harvey Mudd, raising the college's visibility throughout the world, for making Harvey Mudd College memorable to hundreds of secondary school counselors and prospective students for his profa profound impact on young people who are just starting to discover their love for math and who become enthralled with his math magic. <laughs> okay, I gave it away. <laughs> for his tremendous reach to aud audiences online via books and CDs and at the Magic Castle for inspiring thousands of people by making mathematics entertaining and enjoyable, an individual who has served with distinction both this college and the greater community of higher education, Arthur, ben Arthur Benjamin, Smallwood Family Professor of Mathematics, is hereby designated the 2017 recipient of the Henry T. Mudd Prize. Please join me. Our next presenter is Dylan Baker. Dylan's hometown is Sherman Oaks, California. Dylan is majoring in an individual program of study titled Computational Data Science with a concentration in art. Dylan's medium is sculpture. During Dylan's time at MUD, Dylan has been involved in a cappella as a music director this year, has worked in the Writing Center as a tutor, co-writes music and songs with friend Kathleen, whom you heard performing. And they performed together sophomore year at Kahutek. During Dylan's senior year, they served as a proctor in Drinkward Residence Hall. Please join me, join me in welcoming our senior speaker, Dylan Baker. So there's a saying I really like that goes, you can't step twice in the same river. And the thought is that a river is always changing. The water you stepped in yesterday isn't the same water you step in today. And there's a second interpretation too, that the person who stepped in the river yesterday is never the same as the person who steps in it today. And I know it's kind of corny, but I'll get back to it. So people like to talk about how mud was best when they were there 
when West was comprised entirely of broken glass and the fire department hadn't been invented yet. <laughs> when core alone was 128 credits and only three people passed physics on the first try. And when they didn't need to worry about building new dorms because everyone slept in Platt anyway. <laughs> and sure, maybe the free Platt coffee and core PCHEM and getting lost in the Libra complex really was what made mud mud back then. And when Mudd first started, it was the brainchild of this mining engineer, Harvey Seeley Mudd, whose mining career, interestingly enough, both funded geology at Caltech and a large chunk of the LA Philharmonic through the Great Depression, but also took an enormous toll on the mining environment of Cyprus. He passed away in 1955, and a few months later, the school started. So where do we fit in in this whole continuum? Well, we were the first grade in the Shanahan building, we were there to watch DOS turn into DSA, to watch Drinkword be built. And of all the mutters that were there when West's fires got taken away, we were the ones that got to watch them come back. <laughs> we've watched dorm communities shift. We've watched core class curricula get written and rewritten. And we started Femme Union. We helped build Black Lives at Mud and the LLC. Because as we've watched more and more women and people of color and first-gen students and low-income students and queer students and international students and students with disabilities arrive, we have pushed mud to grow because the old mud just doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> I hope we won't say that mud was best when we were here. Because I, will, I hope I won't say that I was best when I was here. I've left my clothes in the washer until they've mildewed. I learned that you have to wash tie-dye shirts alone the first time. <laughs> I've had to get my ID card replaced more than once a semester, pretty much every semester. <laughs> and I didn't do the readings when I could have done the readings, and I didn't get meals with people I should have gotten meals with. And like a lot of people, when I got here, I hadn't thought about separating my own sense of self-worth from my grades. And I didn't realize that after graduating high school, when I was so excited to get out of the house, that I would really, really miss my family when I got here. And I know that in this awkward process of figuring myself out over the last four years, I've hurt people, and I'm sorry. And when I think about how I have changed, it would be ridiculous not to acknowledge how mud has changed me. So with that metaphor from before, I guess if mud is the river, then I've been shaped like a rock tumbling in a stream to become a smooth pebble or a whitewater rafter, tumbling gently over and then missing lecture for the second time this week, and now the whitewater rafter is like two problem sets behind, and why was STEM so much harder when the whitewater rafter took it? <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> yeah, there are lots of parts of mud that changed me. And there are lots of parts of mud that we all changed. But going back, what does it even mean to say that mud changed me? This is what I think. Colin, when I came back from studying abroad in Hungary, I felt like I had lived a thousand lifetimes in a semester. And I was basically starting from scratch junior spring. All of my senior friends had graduated. And my friends in our year had drifted off to different dorms. And I was terrified. And I got back, and you hugged me, and invited me to hang out with the friends you made while I was gone. And mud felt like home again. That's what changed me. Prof. Omar, when I took a class with you as a non-math major, I was scared I would have no idea what I was doing. And you designed curriculum around exploring problems in whatever way came naturally to us. So I just spent the semester looking at problems in ways that I thought were cool, and Two weeks ago, I presented my thesis to the math department. <laughs> That's what changed me. It's the people who are here with us. It's Kathleen showing me Tegan and Sarah for the first time. It's Ben getting tortilla chips with me in the middle of the night because I was too anxious and caffeinated to sleep. It's Maya hanging out with me all night in North's inflatable hot tub, just talking, because guys, the future is terrifying. <laughs> It's Wendy reminding me that there's someone who gets where I'm coming from. And it's Dean Leslie reminding me that I'm strong and capable and I am going to graduate, gosh darn it. And it's Willie. Willie, 
When we got dinner that night last semester and talked about our lives and the parts of us that hurt and about our families and how much we missed our moms and our little siblings and how proud and excited we were to be here and to be finishing college, I started to really get to know you and your dorky bounce and your laugh and your curiosity and your deep-seated empathy for the people around you. You reminded me that this degree isn't just an accomplishment, but a gift and privilege of insight into the world. It's not just an accomplishment, but a tool that we can use to educate and do work that means something and help lift up the people around us. Willie, that changed me. You changed me. And you changed us. So, to my family, to my professors, to the administrators and staff, and to whatever chaotic mix of circumstances brought us together for the last handful of years that led us to meet each other, that led us to meet the people we lost along the way, that led us into these classrooms and across this stage today, to the mud that won't ever exist again, and to the people we won't ever be again, to the class of 2017, thank you for being my river. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. That was so beautiful. I'm excited to introduce today's commencement speaker, mathematician and Rice University professor and longtime friend and hero of mine, Richard Tapia. Professor Tapia is nationally recognized for his research in the computational and mathematical sciences, as well as his leadership in diversity, education, and outreach. He directs Rice University's Center for Excellence and Equity in Education with a mission to empower underrepresented students who are passionate about STEM education. He leads several highly effective programs that have increased the number of underrepresented students attaining undergraduate and graduate degrees in math and science. In addition, he's directed or co-directed the doctoral dissertations of more women and underrepresented minority PhD recipients in science and engineering than anyone in the country. Richard's achievements are many. He was the first in his family to attend college receiving his bachelor's degree, master's degree, and PhD in mathematics from UCLA. He was the first Hispanic elected to the National Academy of Engineering. He has received many honors, including the National Science Foundation's inaugural Presidential Award for Excellence in Science, Mathematics, and Engineering Mentoring, as well as Lifetime Mentor Award from the American Association for the Advancement of Science. He has served on the National Science Board and chaired the National Research Council's Board on Higher Education and the Workforce. In 2011, he received the National Medal of Science, the highest award given by the U.S. government. Two professional conferences be, have been named in his honor, the Richard Tapia Celebration of Diversity in Computing Conference, which a large group of Harvey Mudd students will attend this year and attended last year, and the Blackwell Tapia Conference, whose founders described Tapia as a seminal figure who inspired a generation of African American, Native American, and Latinx students to pursue careers in mathematics. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Richard Tapia. If I had to give uh, my talk a title, it would be called The, Ro the Road Ahead. President Clavi, Harvey Mudd Administration, faculty, staff, graduating students, family and friends, it is a pleasure and an honor to share this special day with you. 
We are proud of you, the graduating students, and congratulate you on your accomplishments. By graduating from Harvey Mudd, one of the finest educational institutions in the country, you have already lived the American dream. In our few minutes together, I will share with you things that I have learned from my own life and hope that they will help you navigate your road ahead. My parents came from Mexico to Los Angeles in search of education. Times were hard. They had to support themselves and were not able to obtain the education that they sought. However, their educational dreams were fulfilled through their children. Out of five, four of us have undergraduate degrees, and three of us have graduate degrees, albeit two of us are lawyers. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm a product of these Mexican parents, the city of Los Angeles, and the time period of the 1960s. As such, I'm not only Mexican-American, I'm very proudly Chicano. <laughs> my father taught the value of inclusion. He loved everyone and they loved him. My mother taught us that pride, hard work, and education take you to the end of the rainbow. And there at the end of the rainbow was a pot of gold. I used to think that she was rather naive with this belief, but I have learned that she was right. I tell you today on this very special Mother's Day, mothers are always right. <laughs> An applause for all the mothers. Another applause for them. Okay? You are here today in part because of your support system, your family, your friends, and the faculty. Graduation is an important opportunity to formally acknowledge this support system and let them share with you the joy and satisfaction of these accomplishments. Formal ceremonies and celebrations are wonderful parts of life. Many years ago, when I received a doctorate degree from UCLA, it was the late 60s with much unrest and confusion, and some of us thought that we should forego graduation ceremonies. And I did. I was very wrong, as my wife of over 50 years has been telling me. <laughs> so it is with great pride that my Harvey Mudd Honorary Doctorate will allow me to be an honorary memory member of the Harvey Mudd Class of 2017. I'm proud of that. The road ahead. You must realize by now that your entire life consists of a sequence of tasks, one right after the other, high school, undergraduate school, graduate school, career development. Moreover, each subsequent task is more or less structured and therefore offers more challenge and requires more original thought and creativity. Yet with each step comes the opportunity for a broader impact. I emphasize that contrary to popular opinion, success is rarely the consequence of taking one single large step. Instead, success is most often the consequence of taking small steps with perseverance and in a coherent, perhaps even obstinate manner. Many small steps. As you move through these tasks of life, do not expect the balance of good and bad or success and adversity to be uniformly distributed across the population. The statement, I've had my bad, now comes my good, is at the very best wishful thinking. Yes, I have lived the American dream, from Los Angeles to the White House and the National Medal of Science, the highest award given by the United States government. The United States is truly a great country. However, my rainbow path has been quite trying, with many ups and many downs. On one hand, I can list successes. On the other hand, failures and adversities. Both lists are quite impressive. My wife, Jean, and I were married while I was a sophomore at UCLA. She had just graduated from Gardena High School. Our daughter, Cersei, was born when I was a junior. Our dreams were simple. Jean's passion was dance, dance, dance. And mine was mathematics. It was clean and simple. I received a PhD from UCLA the same year that our son, Richard, was born. The four of us went off to the University of Wisconsin-Madison and then to Rice University in Houston to follow the rainbow path and search for that promised pot of gold. We had more than our share of successes in Houston. 
Jean had a very successful dance studio with over 450 students. I received tenure in record time. Cersei was a dance and academic star. We were making very good progress, very good progress along this rainbow path. However, in 1977, Jean was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. In 1979, she was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis. She had to give up her studio and navigate the rainbow path from a wheelchair. No longer could she skip, no longer could she dance, but we kept on going. We kept on going. We had no choice. Three years later, Cersei was killed in an automobile accident. She was a student at Rice at the time and had just returned from dancing with a company in New York. Jean said these were three strikes for her. She was out. Her life was over. Finally, I convinced her that she still had much to contribute. She had to continue. We kept traveling on, but we really had no other choice. However, I no longer had Cersei to help me push Jean's wheelchair along the rainbow path. Jean started an exercise program for people with multiple sclerosis and people in wheelchairs called Coming Back. She won national recognition for her work. I was the first Hispanic I was the first Hispanic elected to the National Academy of Engineering. I was the first Hispanic awarded the status of university professor at Rice University, and only the sixth such selection in the history of the school. I received the prestigious Vannevar Bush Award from the National Science Board, the National Medal of Science from the President of the United States. Again, in both cases, the first Hispanic to ever so honored. I would trade my numerous awards and honors, and Jean would suffer multiple sclerosis many times over just to have Cersei back with us. But we don't have that choice. Our only choice is to give up or play the hand that was dealt. The choice is easy. Life has a strange twist. I am now an expert on things that I really never wanted to know about, like wheelchairs and how to travel with a person in a wheelchair. I share this personal story to tell you this. When you encounter obstacles and adversity, learn to look both ways. Your challenge is to handle adversity Prosperity is quite easy to handle. Realize that tragedy and failure are as much a part of life as our triumph and success. Failure is a part of every successful person's life. You must learn to grow from your failures and to develop compassion and sensitivity from your tragedies. At each stage of your career and life, continue, continue to dream and, make, and to make your dreams come true but learn to cope and still enjoy life, even if they don't all come true. Let's talk about the National Medal of Science. How can I, Richard Tapia, belong to a class that consists of so many of my great mathematical heroes? For example, Norbert Wiener, Paul J. Cohen, John Tukey, Peter Lax. At the 2011 National Medal Award Ceremony at the White House, President Obama came out and said, all seven of you have performed excellent research, but Richard Tapia has given to the nation in the critically important area of improving ethnic representation and gender equity. I wish the other six of you could emulate his success. I then said to myself, thank you, President Obama, for showing me that maybe I do belong, okay? So I share a little story with you that's not in my plans remarks. But Jean was in a wheelchair, so when we went to the White House, they brought her in first and they put her in the front row, right where President Obama was going to speak. Okay? And then a woman came out and said, President Obama does not like you to yell. Please clap, but don't yell. So my wife sat there. President Obama came out and they said, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, and played hail to the chief. An incredible moment. Then they announced my name, Richard Tapia. And Jean went crazy. She screamed. She yelled. She jumped. If she hadn't been in the wheelchair, she would have jumped up and down. Okay? And President Obama looked at me, and he said, that's your wife. <laughs> and I said, yes, but she's Puerto Rican. <laughs> and all Puerto Ricans are loud. And he looked back at me and said, I understand. 
I have now been on the Rice faculty for more than four decades and have been involved in addressing inequities, both for women and underrepresented minorities at all levels, university, state, and nation. For literally all of those years, I did not plan on doing this. It was just something that had to be done, and I knew that I could help. Nowhere does the job description of a Rice mathematician include these activities. And for most of you, your job description won't say, make the world a better place. Yet I implore you to care about this and do a part to solve current critical societal and educational problems. Realize that we, the United States, no longer set the bar on national well-being, including protection of the environment, health care, and public K-12 education. Indeed, we share the bottom with a host of third world nations. Violence today is at a frightening level. Drugs, disrespect, anger, and hate are the characteristics of the times. Little by little, we've let TV, the media, and the internet define the value system for today's youth. As a nation, we cannot let this continue. Yes, you will be the leaders of, the day, of today. You will be the leaders of tomorrow. But this youth will be the leaders of the day after tomorrow. To not care, to not speak out, to not reach back would be the most unpatriotic action you could perpetuate upon your country. You may say that we have left you with these problems, and I would answer, this is true. But we can't redeal the hand. Your challenge is to play well what you have been dealt. The future of the world's scientific and societal health is in your hands. Many of you will distinguish yourself with prestigious awards and recognition, possibly a Nobel Prize, a Pulitzer Prize, a Fields Medal. This will be of significant value to America's health and bring you great prestige, but this alone will not be enough. It will not bring you the satisfaction of helping those less privileged to live better lives and improving the health of the nation. It's not someone else's job. As of today, it's your job. It is now your job. I share with you several reflections that have guided me in my life. Guidelines. Race and ethnicity should not dictate educational destiny. I may not be the best, but I'm good enough. If you sit on the porch with the big dogs and occasionally bark like a big dog, the world will view you as a big dog. <laughs> That's how I've been able to fake all these things, okay? <laughs> Significant change is possible. A few years before I accepted a position at Rice University in 1970, the Rice Constitution said, for whites only. Yet under my leadership, Rice University has produced more underrepresented minority PhDs in the mathematical sciences than any other university in the country. We proudly count Harvey Mudd's mathematics professor, Talithia Williams, as one of these successes. My successes as an underrepresented minority allow me to serve as a role model in two distinct manners. In two distinct manners. One, to those underrepresented, I represent feasibility. Yes, it can be done. Si se puede. And to the majority community, at a time which is so critical today, I demonstrate that excellence comes in all flavors. We can and must sit at the leadership table with you to make these decisions. Finally, life and people around you are beautiful. Reach for them. They need you, and you need them. You all need each other. I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tapia. Your, your story, your mission, your work, it's inspiring to all of us. Thank you for sharing that with us. 
And now, for the purpose we've come together, on Friday, the faculty recommended to the Board of Trustees a list of the class of 2017 for, to receive the degrees of Bachelor of Science. The, the Board of Trustees unanimously approved that recommendation. And now to present the candidates, I'd like to turn this over to Dean Jeff Groves. Will the Bachelor of Science degree candidates of the class of 2017 please rise? Mr. Chairman, on behalf of the faculty of Harvey Mudd College, it is my great pleasure to present the candidates who have successfully completed the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Science. And now upon recommendation of the faculty and with the full <coughs> unanimous uh, approval of the Board of Trustees, I now confer upon you the, the degree of Bachelor of Science with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Caesar J. Oriana. <laughs> Marissa Catherine Kager. Lakshay Akula. <laughs> Justice Allen. <laughs> Sarah Anderson. Bryn Elise Arborico. <laughs> Matthew Bay. <laughs> Aaron Robert Bagheri. Nicholas Bailey. <laughs> Dylan Caitlin Baker. <laughs> bon Yuen. Achinte Bonsal. Savannah Barron. Marisol Nora Beck.
Emily Elizabeth Beasy. Robin Bendiak. Thomas Alejandro Berueta. Zane Bodenbender. Amy Francis Brown. Cassandra Min Burgess. Max J. Byers. Yijing Tsai. Charisma Calderon. Hao Chao. Michael Chafee. Sherilyn Elizabeth Chan. Jonathan Pei Wa Chang. Lonnie Chapko. Bonnie Chen. Christine Chen. William Chen. Min Young Choi. Scott Chow. Harry Cook. Coco Coyle. Robert Cypress. Nava Delal. Jessica De La Fuente. Terrence James Diaz. Sam Dietrich. Catherine Ann Dover. Adam Dunlap.
Alexander Felipe Echevarria. Mark Finzi. Emily Jane First. Sabine Fontaine. Zachary Daniel Friedlander. Aaron J. Friend. Sean Nabil Garib. Lisa Kamiko Goler. Nicholas Gonzalez. Alec Reynolds Brady Griffith. Eleanor Ann Gund. Deval Gupta. Rebecca Harmon. Kevin Herrera. Magda Levacek. Shari Ho. Joanna Ho. Samantha Huang. Huang Tavin. Maxwell Howard. Suyi Hu. Leonardo Huerta. Chung Min Char. Annalise Johnson. Catherine Jones. Jesse Joseph. Sengor L. Joseph. Evan Khan.
Zoab Kapoor. Jonas Leif Kaufman. Lucia Emiko K. Lee Jun Kim. Emma Margaret Klein. Anna Marie Canuck. <laughs> Kathleen Elizabeth Cole. <laughs> Aishvarya Corday. Deniz Korman. <laughs> Elizabeth Krenkel. <laughs> Alyssa Kim Kubota. Benjamin Clifford Kunst. <laughs> Anya Hoyin Kwan. <laughs> Joshua Ryan Rosh Lamb. Alexa Kumiko Lei. Thomas Tin Lee. Elizabeth Marie Lee. Faith Lemire Baton. Nathaniel Leslie. Carly Elise Lessard. Calvin Leung. <laughs> Xu Yu Li. <laughs> Caitlin Lincapper. Hu Ting Lin. Aaron R. Lobb. Rohin Lohe. Jonathan Douglas Yenhao Bouvier Lum. <laughs> Kyle Thomas Lund. <laughs> Ru 
Wei Yun Ma. Noah Marcus. Andrew L. Marino. Erica Magdalena Martelli. Maya Martirosian. Daniel Patrick McCabe. Kelly Wu McConnell. Patrick Calvin McKean. Timothy Middleness. Nathan Miller. Sam Kim Miller. Jeffrey N. Milling. Rachel Mao. Eric Todd Mueller. Michael Musio. Rohan Nagpal. Jiwan Vijay Naik. Daniel Trung Dang Nguyen. Jacob Trung Nguyen. Na Nok Nguyen. Fung Thuy Nguyen. Michelle Nguyen. Rachel Kathleen O'Neill. Vidushi Oja. Colin Okasaki. Jose Orozco. <laughs> Keely Shea Overbay. <laughs> Alexander Ozdemir. Aaron Peng. <laughs> T. 
Seha Park. Ranak Pednaker. Micah Gabriel Pedrick. Elise Ann Pennington. Feliz Miguel Perez. Orpheus Petrulus. <laughs> Madeline Pignetti. <laughs> Emilia Grace Reed. Michael Aaron Reese. Michael Charles Reeve. Paige Elaine Rinnert. Veronica Alyssa Rivera. Charlotte Whitfield Robinson. Daniel Rodriguez. Fernando Salud. <laughs> Abram Sanderson. <laughs> Lydia Scharf. Daniel David Schmidt. <laughs> Olivia Dean Schnabel. <laughs> Emily Rose Schooley. <laughs> Ian Schweikart. Andrew Scott. Joshua Sealand. Ellen Seidel. Sakshi Shah. Rohan Shankar. Michael David Sheely. Catherine Yu Jung Shim. Dina Sinclair. (laughs) 
Joseph Sinopoli. Paul Andre Wolfgang Slats. Tyler Smallwood. Kevin Smith. Ian Song. Norwood Square the Third. Connor Stashko. Joshua Sidney Straub. Aaron Stringer Uzdan. <laughs> Tiffany Howlian Sun. Ruth Sung. Alice Ann Cassia Siliga. Yosatan Tawabut. David Tomas Tenorio. Zoe Tucker. Jonathan Uecki. Vaivav K. Viswanathan. Aaron Wang. Jeremy Wang. Jin Chung Wang. Kong Yi Wong. Sarah Wang. Anna Greer Welsh. <laughs> Philip Woods. <laughs> Kira Azurite Wild. Yi Yang. Lisa Yin. Hope Hong Meng Yu.
Jiaxin Yu. Bo Zhang. Jialun Zhang. Carmel J. Zhao. Hannah Zossman. Anissa Dea. And Willie Correa Zuniga. Willie's family, his father Guillermo, mother Sarah, and brothers Andrew and Nicholas will accept Willie's diploma. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate all of you and thank you for your support you demonstrated. Also to the faculty and staff, we would like to give special thanks to Maria Glawi and John Jacobson and the professors at the physics lab class, Mr. Philip Cha and Michael Story Lombardi. This diploma goes to Willie for all his efforts and hard work. You will be missed and loved forever. Send in good vibes your way. Thank you. Sarah, Guillermo, Nicholas, and Andrew, thank you for being here with us at commencement. Know that the influence and memory of your son, your brother, is strong at the college. Willie touched our community in a deep and special way that will persist both on our campus and in the hearts of all his friends and classmates graduating today. Thank you. And now, on behalf of the college, let me say congratulations to the HMC class of 2017. That looked dangerous. <laughs> I now call on Chair Wayne Drinkward to deliver a resolution from the Board of Trustees. 
Congratulations to all of you. Earlier this year, the Harvey Mudd College Board of Trustees approved a recommendation from the faculty to award an honorary doctoral degree. Harvey Mudd College's policy to award such a degree requires first that the candidate must have made distinguished contribution to the advancement of engineering or science and demonstrated a record of contribution to society consonant with the ideals embodied in a Harvey Mudd education. Second, the faculty reappointment, promotion, and tenure committee recommends the individual and the faculty approve. And finally, the trustees vote the recommendation. Let me read uh, the re resolution from the faculty. In recognition of and in appreciation of Barbara Patoka's distinguished service to Harvey Mudd College and to the advancement of undergraduate education in sciences, engineering, and mathematics in her generous and significant contributions to a range of institutional initiatives, the faculty of Harvey Mudd College hereby approve the awarding of, to Barbara Patoka of an honorary doctoral degree in engineering, sciences, and the humane letters. Today we add the 14th name to this distinguished fellowship. Upon recommendation of the faculty and the Board of Trustees of Harvey Mudd College, I do hereby confer to Barbara Patoka the degree of Doctor of Engineering, Science, and Humane Letters, honoris causa, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Patoka. That was a surprise, by the way. <laughs> Earlier this year, the Harvey Mudd College Board of Trustees approved another recommendation from the faculty to award an honorary doctoral degree. Let me read the resolution from the faculty. In addition, in recognition of and appreciation of Dr. Richard Tapia's distinguished service to the advancement of undergraduate education in sciences, engineering, and mathematics, and his generous and significant contributions to a range of initiatives, the faculty of Harvey Mudd College hereby approve the awarding to Richard Tapia of an honorary doctoral degree in engineering, sciences, and humane letters. Today, we add the 15th name to this distinguished fellowship. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and the Board of Trustees of Harvey Mudd College, I do hereby confer to Richard Tapia the degree of Doctor of Engineering, Science, and Humane Letters, honoris causa, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Tapia. The graduates we honor today have achieved a new status at the college, that of Harvey Mudd College alumni. Here to welcome you to that amazing group is David Sonner, class of 1980, parent 2018, and president of the Alumni Association. Thank you, Maria. It is my privilege and pleasure to welcome the great class of 2017 into the Alumni Association of Harvey Mudd College. Welcome.
As new alumni, I have some good news and some bad news. Let's start with the good news. The good news is there's no place like mud. Over many decades, I've talked with many alumni, and if their experiences are any guide, you sometimes will work hard in your future, but nothing in your future academic or professional life will be harder than mud. <laughs> That's a big part of the reason why mud alumni are so successful. In your time at mud, you learned a lot from your courses, but equally important, you learned lots of associated skills. You learn these skills, at least in large part, by doing. They include the ability to manage your time and finish a hard assignment on a deadline. The ability to get along with others and work collaboratively on a project. And the ability to quickly and efficiently master a new subject. Those skills have led many MUD alumni before you to successful and rewarding careers, including in fields that did not exist when they were students. Those skills also will serve you well. Many alumni say that the most important thing they got out of MUD was the confidence that they could master any subject if they wanted. With the passage of time and exposure to the world, I am confident that you will increasingly value your MUD education and recognize that it prepared you well for your future. I know that you are well prepared because Less than two weeks ago, I saw many of you field difficult questions at Projects Day and Presentation Days. MUD alumni have attended the most prestigious graduate and professional schools. They have worked at the biggest public and private corporations. They will tell you that sometimes they worked hard, but nothing in their academic and professional life was harder than MUD. And based on what I saw at Projects Day and Presentation Days, I know that you are as well prepared for your future as they were for theirs. So the good news is there's no place like mud. You now might be wondering, what's the bad news? The bad news is there's no place like mud. <laughs> when you arrived at mud, you probably discovered that it was a lot easier to make friends than you imagined because there are so many smart people like you at MUD who share so many of your interests and passions. When you go into the world beyond MUD, it won't be as easy to find people like you. Equally important, the friendships you made at MUD probably are close ones. Many alumni say that MUD friendships are a little like the close friendships formed in other groups that go through intense experiences together, like Navy SEALs. Like many alumni before you, you worked together on many difficult assignments, often in different classes simultaneously. In the process, you learned to deal with pressure and bounce back from setbacks, which are skills that you will need in life. But probably what you will value the most are the close friendships forged during your MUD experiences together. Many alumni will tell you that looking back over their lives, there's no place like MUD for making lots of new and close friends. Many of your MUD friendships will last a lifetime if you work to keep them. Of course, as you go through life, you will continue to make friends. As you extend your network of friends, please try to include MUD alumni outside the circle of friends you made when you were a student here. I'd like to share a little personal story. When I graduated from MUD many years ago, I thought that my only close alumni friends would be from my graduating class or the classes close to mine in time. In other words, the friends that I made when I was a student here. I thought that most of the other alumni would be too distant in age for, from me um, to develop close friendships with them. However, despite sometimes big age differences, I've found that I have much more in common with other alumni than I had originally thought. In fact, I now count as good friends many alumni who are far from me in age. You too will soon discover that age becomes much less important after college. Please don't make my mistake. Don't wait to seek out friendships with alumni outside the circle of friends that you made when you were a student here. In seeking out new alumni friends, you will discover that older and younger alumni often help each other. Older alumni often help younger alumni get good jobs and quickly climb the career ladder. 
In exchange, older alumni get smart and capable younger alumni to work with them. It's therefore common to see mothers uh, clustered in organizations. There are almost 7,000 MUD alumni now, and our Alumni Association provides ways for older and younger alumni to meet. For example, Alumni Weekend, which is held on campus every spring, is a chance for you to reconnect with your classmates, especially for major reunions that happen every five years. But it's also a chance for you to meet alumni from other classes. More than 600 alumni and about 350 guests attended our last Alumni Weekend two weeks ago. Our Alumni Association also sponsors many other alumni events, from traveling in the Sierras to whale watching off Monterey, from attending concerts in the park in Chicago to going to the San Diego Zoo. The mix is different every year. In the recent past, among our various adventures, we've done an alumni trip to Antarctica, this summer, I hope you guys will attend, we have four events planned around the solar eclipse on August 21st in the path of totality from Oregon to South Carolina. Next year, we plan to go to the Galapagos Islands and Machu Picchu. Some of you might be a little shy, but the reward for going to alumni events is worth the effort. It's a great way to begin new friendships with fellow alumni. Life's transitions, like today's graduation from Harvey Mudd College, can be exciting and a little scary because you don't know what the future holds. But please believe me, like thousands of alumni before you, you are extremely well prepared for your future. So try to enjoy your life and remember to focus on the people in it, including your family and also your fellow Mudd alumni as you embark on your next great adventure. Thank you. Thank you, David. This has been an extraordinarily painful year for our community. Since the death of rising junior Tristan Woody in a car accident last July, and then the death of senior physics major, proctor, and leader among the Latinx community, Willie Zuniga, in February, followed shortly by the death of script student leader, Tatisa Zunguzi, in early March, this year has felt like one prolonged period of grief because of the loss of such beloved young people. Layered on top of this, there have been a multiple of other challenges, including continued concerns about workload and mental health issues, especially for students already feeling marginalized and insufficiently supported at MUD. The rise of intense anger and protests at both ends of the political spectrum, and the feelings of extreme exhaustion and stress among our students, faculty, and staff during the last several weeks of this academic year. Our community, especially our student body, has become much more racially diverse over the past four years. This is the result of many years of effort by our community working towards our strategic goal of unsurpassed excellence and diversity at all levels. Now our challenge is to make our teaching and learning environments engaging and supportive of everyone. We know that this is a long journey. Over the past weeks, we have had difficult conversations that reveal how much work we still have to do. But the wonderful thing is that despite the exhaustion, stress, and pain, we have come together as a community to embrace these next steps. I am incredibly proud of how everyone in our community has worked together over the last few weeks. The faculty, staff, students, alumni, trustees, and parents have shown enormous support for each other and for our goal of becoming the best undergraduate science and engineering education on the face of the planet and one in which everyone can thrive inclusive of race, gender, sexual orientation, or any other attribute. Our journey is challenging, 
but we are making progress, almost certainly more progress this year than any other at this time in our history. I'd like to give a huge thank you to our graduates, the class of 2017, for their leadership of our student community during their time here, but especially during this last year. I would also like to thank everyone in our community for all you have done and will continue to do in the future as we move forward together. And now a few words, especially for our graduates. You are, every single one of you, you are amazing. We are so lucky to have had you here over the last few years and for your many contributions to make our community and our college better. We are so proud of all that you have accomplished. Your achievements in research, clinics, competition, and national awards are incredible. Your commitment to helping each other succeed to having a positive impact on the world and to preserving a strong sense of humor and humility are inspiring. Whatever your next steps after MUD will be, I know you will bring your full talents to bear and spread creativity and joy to those around you. On behalf of the faculty and staff and the Board of Trustees, we wish you all the best and we look forward to seeing you back on campus soon and often. And for those of you who are going to be working down the road in Ontario, Niagara, I, I know you're trying not to come back every weekend, but we really do want to see you. Ladies and gentlemen, the 59th commencement ceremony of Harvey Mudd College is now concluded. Will the audience please stand and remain standing and allow the academic procession to exit the site to the back of the tent. Please follow. Please follow our graduates to the reception at the Shanahan Center for Teaching and Learning back on the Harvey Mudd College campus. Thank you very much.